Hey everyone, today I'm doing a little maintenance on the Corolla. Uh, I, the other day I was driving it and it started to idle a little rough while I was sitting for a couple of minutes. Uh, I had had this happen once before and I spoke to a Toyota mechanic about it and they said that typically when they idle rough it's from a little bit of gum buildup on the butterfly valve of the throttle body. They said this is sort of becoming a maintenance thing now and you have to do it on a somewhat regular basis where you take the throttle body off, you got to clean a little bit of uh, carbon and varnish that builds up on the throttle body blade. So I already got it off just to take a look at it because I did it about a year or so ago and it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be but it can use a little bit of a cleaning. Uh, just real simple, it's not very hard to take it off. Uh, all you need basically is two tools. You need a 10 millimeter socket, a wrench, and a pair of pliers. Uh, I already took the engine plastic engine cover off that takes no tools and I also have the throttle body off already. Now if you need to do this yourself, it's very very simple. First thing is unbolt the intake tube. You can either use uh, a Phillips head screwdriver or a 10 millimeter socket and then the the valve that goes from the breather. You can actually pull, you can take it off by hand. It doesn't take a lot of effort and then just undo the bolts for the air tube and just uh, push it out of the way. You don't have to take it out. Then you have, on the back side, you have the electrical connector because this is electronically controlled. And down here, you have these two hoses that that's what you need the pliers for to get these clamps off. This is a coolant line. They actually have coolant running through the throttle body, so when you take these off, a little bit of coolant will come out. So just don't be alarmed when you pop it off and about maybe an ounce or two of coolant comes out. It's really not a big deal. Just maybe put a pan underneath just to catch it but uh, they do come out fairly easily. And then on here, the throttle body itself is hold, held on by four bolts that you also use that 10 millimeter wrench for. This is what they look like. They are all the same size, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. And then you can take off the throttle body itself. Now the throttle body really wasn't too bad. I kind of already cleaned it a little bit, but it wasn't really that bad. Now, getting back to what I said about this throttle body. Just to orient it, this is how it sits in the car. So here are your hoses and the electrical connector. Again, this is an electronically controlled throttle body. This is not an old style one that just has a spring that holds it close. So you do not want to force the butterfly valve of this throttle body open. You can do two things if you force it open. You can possibly knock it out of calibration and you can possibly damage the gears on the inside. So you don't want to force it open at all. So just clean it with it closed. Some people say, I've never tried this, but some people say you can leave it in place with the uh, with the tube off, but the electrical connector in, and you can have somebody basically turn the ignition on without starting the car and hold their foot to the floor, and it'll, it will open it up, and you can clean it that way if you don't want to take it out. I think that's not as good of a way to do it as taking it out, being it only takes about three minutes to take this thing out. It's very simple. And then this is the gasket for it. And if you notice, this is kind of a very weird looking gasket. Uh, you just need to make sure you orient it correctly when you if you take the gasket out. This little pink marking goes on the top here, so it basically sits like this. Now, I think that this is oriented like this. Some people thought that this, that this metal part is for, like, sensors or to carry some sort of electrical current. I do not believe that's what it's for. There's no connectors or anything on there. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this is just to keep the airflow smooth and keep it from becoming turbulent. Um, at certain throttle positions so as you can see this thing has a little bit of crud on it not a ton but i've already, like i said already done this once before so i figured i'd just put a new one on there it's five dollars to replace this thing and i don't want to risk damaging it and then having the car sit for a day or two depending on if i can get the part right away so since i've already had this out once and cleaned it once and it's already full of gum and varnish again figure I'll just go replace it. It's $5. It's not a big deal when you clean these things these are sensitive you do not want to use carburetor cleaner or any sort of harsh abrasives to clean this thing so basically what you're looking at is a toothbrush something with soft bristles but a little bit of a stiffer soft bristle and basically the fluid you want to use is a throttle body cleaner because they are specifically designed for these especially ones that have electronics in them uh, the carburetor cleaners are a little bit aggressive and if you use like brillo or something that's a that's a metal or very abrasive you can start to really scratch these up and you may or may not do any sort of damage to it so you just like i said want to be careful very gently scrub these they are expensive and they can be damaged so just very very gently scrub the edge around here if you can see it i'll grab the flashlight around the very edge where the butterfly valve meets the housing you can see there's a little bit of a varnish buildup 
and that causes a rough idle condition. That's what the mechanic said. Most likely the issues come from when I spoke to them about this last time. They said you are, unfortunately, it has become a maintenance item and you need to do this on a semi-regular basis, clean this thing out. So they said if it starts to idle a little bit rough, this is most likely the main culprit of it. So just keep that in mind. If the car starts to idle rough, you don't have to necessarily run to the mechanic right away if you want to tackle this yourself. A bottle of cleaners, a couple of bucks, an old toothbrush. Usually most people have them laying around for, for various cleaning items. And it's a lot cheaper and easier to at least try to clean it than it is to go to the mechanic or flat out replace this thing since it is fairly expensive. So uh, once I get it done, I'll show everything with it back on and just talk about putting it back on. It's, it's a pretty straightforward uh, procedure, but I'll go ahead and clean this and see if I can get it a little bit better than it already is. All right, so I got the throttle body pretty clean. It was actually dirtier than I thought. Once I started spraying the uh, throttle body cleaner in there, a lot of chunks of varnish and carbon really came out of it. So uh, it wasn't too, too bad, especially compared to a lot of the ones I've seen. But as you can see, it is uh, noticeably cleaner now. So hopefully that'll kind of help that random rough idle issue I had. It only did it once, but I try to keep on top of things because... This is my daily driver, and I need the thing to be reliable, and I don't want it to run rough. Uh, if you do encounter that, uh, if you have the air conditioner on, the AC compressor, if you turn it off, it usually helps it uh, as a temporary thing. So I had the AC on at that time, and the mechanics kind of know that it usually does with the air conditioning on just because of the added stress on it at idle. So if you turn it off, it will help it considerably. But uh, that thing's pretty clean. Now, I put the new gasket in place already. Uh, like I said, it only goes one way. You have this, uh, the top, you see that little, right here, that little pink uh, marker, basically, as a, to orientate which way it has to go. It really can go only go in one way. Uh, it doesn't have an inside-outside specific way it goes. You just need to make sure when you do put it in, you just kind of very gently push it into place because it does take a little tiny bit of effort just to put it in place to seat it correctly so just make sure you do that be very gentle with it it actually seems to be pretty tough but again just be gentle with it and uh, i'll go ahead and i'll put it back on and then once everything's on i'll just uh, re-go over uh, tightening and the order i put things on it okay i have uh, most of the it back together now uh, first thing I did, again, I double-checked to make sure that the gasket was seated correctly and it was a, it was in its proper orientation. Uh, I then put the throttle body on. Uh, all these four bolts are the same 10 millimeter wrench you can use with them. Uh, make sure it goes on straight and snug all four of these bolts. You're tightening into a plastic manifold, so do not go crazy because you'll end up warping it or damaging it if you go nuts. So just very snug on all four, but not too tight. Uh, then... I put the electrical connector on in the back here. When you push it on, you should hear a definitive click, and then just give it a gentle tug to make sure that it seated correctly. Then I put back on these two coolant lines. I put them in place, and then I move the clamps into their uh, original orientation. I always try to put clamps back in the same spot because they, they tend to put a little bit of an imprint, and they'll go back, and they'll sit in that spot the best. And then just also give them a gentle tug, make sure that they're not going to come off uh, by accident. So put them back in place then. I made sure that the air box was bolted in correctly. Now the last thing I have to do is just put this on. I'll get that set into place and then I can either use that 10 millimeter wrench I was using for the bolts for the throttle body or you can also use a Phillips head screwdriver and then this is actually gentle enough you can actually squeeze these with your fingers and put it back in place. That's all I have left to do and then I'll just put the cosmetic engine cover on and that's basically a simple explanation for how to clean the throttle body on these things. Now this is, like I said, when I talked to that mechanic from Toyota, he said this is becoming a maintenance item. And if it idles rough, you're probably going to have to do this to smooth it out again. They seem to well, idle a little rough kind of here and there. And then as they get more gummed up, they'll just get continuously worse. But uh, just keep an eye on it. And if you have to take it off to clean it, it's a very easy process. Just take your time. You only need a couple of basic hand tools. And just be very gentle with the throttle body itself uh, when you're cleaning it. So I hope this video helps a lot of people out. Thanks for watching.